Hey guys, Tony here. Welcome to the Total Knee Replacement Support Group. So in this video, I want to answer a question from the Facebook group. Uh, it was brought up today. Somebody was asking about using a cane and progressing off a walker. And she was specifically asking about, is it too early? Can you overdo it? Like, what are we looking for? So I will usually progress to a cane pretty quickly in the clinic. Um, I'm usually looking at between the first end of the first week into you know 10 to 15 days I want somebody on a on a cane I usually want somebody on that cane during their best time of day so most of my clients that's gonna be like 10 a.m. to noon or 1 p.m. They, they've kind of gotten a little bit of interrupted sleep they're feeling better they've gotten up they're moving around maybe they've had breakfast um, that's when I want them at their best practicing with the cane and, and probably the biggest criteria for me in terms of when it's time to use a cane is if you feel like you can comfortably walk with the cane touching the ground without leaning on it and so I'm gonna back up and kind of show you what I'm talking about hopefully you guys can still hear me so if I had a left total knee replacement so on this side the camera might switch it this is my left side my left knee was replaced the cane goes in my right hand and basically what I want to do is the cane is there just to touch the ground to feel the ground if I'm leaning on the cane then it's way too early to progress to the cane I don't care if it's five weeks post-op you're just not ready to progress to the cane and we're all gonna progress at different rates that's totally fine if I can just rest the cane on the ground touch the ground when my surgical leg steps forward, the cane comes with it, and then I kind of walk through. So as much as possible, we still want this kind of reciprocal gait pattern. Um, then we're ready. We're ready to move to the cane. Now the question is, well, how do you prepare for the cane? And if you watch some of my other videos, you'll see that right from day one, like 24 hours post-op, I like to see if I can have my clients who I'm supervising stand at the kitchen counter unassisted maybe touching the top of the counter doing a little right to left side to side weight shift one foot forward one foot back shifting front and back onto the surgical leg off the surgical leg <coughs> and then i'll even have them progress to where they're standing both feet side by side and just picking up the non-surgical leg we're lifting the non-surgical leg so that we put some weight through the surgical leg most of what you're doing during the first week to 10 days is really about building confidence in the surgical leg. <clears throat> you want to be sure, you want to convince yourself and your brain that your leg can support your body weight while the other leg is swinging through the air. Until you do that, you're just not ready for the cane, but that's okay because quality is more important than quantity. And I've seen clients who rush to the cane too quickly and they're leaning on it and they're hurting their wrist and their elbow and their shoulder and it, it's just ugly and what's happening is they're developing compensatory uh, stepping patterns that really don't help them in the long run. You want to return to normal walking the best you can. The way you do that is with walking as technically correct as you can while you're rehabbing. So look for my videos where I show you how to use a treadmill to allow the surgical leg to work through heel, toe, normal gait. Sorry about that, my battery is dying. Um, look for the treadmill videos to, to show you how I use the surgical leg to go through normal heel, toe, symmetrical gait. Look at, if you like an elliptical or an arc trainer, the videos I have on that just to get that reciprocal motion so that you're taking the symmetrical stride length front and back. And then be patient. Give yourself the time you need. You know, a big factor that nobody talks about is a lot of people will lose a lot of blood during the procedure. They come out with low iron, low red blood counts. And you know, what seems like it should be easy to do all of a sudden gets you fatigued and winded just because you're not getting the oxygen into the tissue. So there's lots of factors to take into consideration. Guys, I'm gonna go back. I'm on vacation. I hope you're doing amazingly well. I can't wait to hear the stories about you guys after rehab. 
going on a vacation like this. Hopefully you stay in the group and let us know how amazing you're doing 12 months, 18 months, 24 months after surgery. As always guys, I appreciate your time. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you get a chance, I would love it if you'd share my videos. I'll catch you guys on the next one.